Hello and welcome to another craft video of the Mass Center Regional Library. I'm Miss Stephanie, one of the children's librarians, and this month I am very excited to share with you a couple crafts that we're going to do. We are going to be making a caterpillar magnet and one of these beautiful butterfly rings. And in order to get the materials to get started on these crafts, you just need to pick up a bag at your nearest um, Mass Center Regional Library branch, and it's going to contain the following items. First, you're going to get instructions for both the caterpillar magnet and the butterfly ring. You're going to get a handful of pom-poms. You'll get, and it'll be a little hard to see these, but you'll get two of these little googly eyes. You'll get a large clothespin, a strip of magnetic tape, two regular size pipe cleaners, a smaller black pipe cleaner, and then from home you're going to need a couple other things. Just some binder clips, a pair of scissors, a ruler, some markers or crowns, and some Elmer's or tacky glue. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, well here's all the materials that you can use to make your very own caterpillar magnet. And I'm gonna set him aside so we can make our own. And first thing you can do, if you want, is you can take your clothespin and you can color it with markers if you like. I'm not going to, but if you want to, that would be great. So I'm just gonna set this aside. And the next thing you're gonna do is we are going to put this magnetic tape on one side of here so it will stick to your fridge or other or a cabinet or whatever else is metal in your place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to peel the paper off the back like that. Then I'm going to stick it in the center and I'm gonna press down really hard on it like that. Good. And it seems to be staying well. I did have trouble when I was making the other one, like the edge may curl up a bit. And if you have that problem, what you can do is just take a dab of glue and put it there and then stick one of these binder clips like this on the end and let it set so it will dry and stick to the clothespin. So, but this piece of tape is doing a really good job so we're not gonna need the binder clips. So then we're gonna turn over and we're going to glue our little pom-poms for the caterpillar body. So what I did is, this is Elmer's glue. You can also use tacky glue and if you're having, a, if it's kind of getting a little tricky to stay on, you could use a hot glue gun as well. So, I'm just gonna put some glue on the top like this. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put my pom-poms in any order I want to on here. So I'll make the blue one his head. And then put the yellow one next. And then this nice cute little peach one. The light green. And finally the purple. And then what we'll do final step will be to put glue some little pom-pom eyes. So I'll just put a dab of glue right here and right here. And then I'll stick the eyes on. And let me get the other eye. And just wipe the little extra glue off. And there we go. And that is the caterpillar magnet. And I would recommend letting this dry overnight just so it'll stay and won't fall off when you put it on your fridge. And to put it on your fridge, all you gotta do is open and close it, like stick it on, and then you can put open it to put papers or other notices that you need for your home on it. So those is our caterpillar magnets. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make this beautiful butterfly ring. So let me put this aside for a bit. And what you're gonna do first is you're gonna take your two colored pipe cleaners and you are going to twist them together in the middle like this. maybe three or four times, maybe five. All right, and so it will look like that. And then what you'll do next is you're going to place your finger in the middle of this and wrap it around. This may take a few times. And what you wanna do is, because I you wanna do it with your finger because this is gonna be your ring and you wanna know how it's gonna fit. And then once you have that, you're going to twist them together like this. 
and then spread them apart. All right, and then take the, it off. And now we're going to use our scissors to trim it so the top and the bottom are even. So I'll just push these together like this. And notice that I have the two colors on top. One of the colors are the two on top and the other colors are the two on the bottom. So we'll snip these off too. And we'll push these aside. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our ruler and we are just going to measure it. And so this is about three, three, a little more than three and four inches. And we're gonna take about half an inch off. So of the bottom ones, because we want the bottom wings to be a little smaller than the top ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it right here and I'm just gonna snip a little bit more off. And then just to make sure that the top and the bottom are the same, I'm going to line them up like this and then cut them apart again. So now it should look like this with the color. The top color looks like this and the bottom is like that. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to carefully use our fingers to make spirals and to make it to the wings. So what I'll do is I'll carefully ball this up like this. I'm pinching it and I'm doing it into a tight spiral towards the center of my ring like this. Okay, so I've got one spiral down and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other blue one. I'm gonna tuck it in, like do a little knob right there and then just carefully pinch it with your fingers to make it into another spiral. Just hold it steady with your one hand and roll it up with your other. Okay, so we've got our two bottom spirals. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the top to make the top part of the wings. So I'm just putting a little nub in and then making a really tight spiral. Just keep going. All right. So now it's on top of the blue ones and then we'll do the final one. All right, making our last spiral. Just see how tight I'm wanting. But if you want to make it a little looser, that's up to you because it's your ring and you could get more of a open effect if you want to do it that way. So I've got the two blue ones on the bottom and the two larger orange ones on top. Now I'm going to take my black pipe cleaner. I'm going to slide it where you put your finger normally. Then I'm going to put it around like this and tuck it under and go under. I may, it may have a little trouble seeing that, but I'm basically wrapping it in between the left two spirals, the left two spirals and the right two spirals. And so there we go, it's up and I have a little antenna. And then I'm wrapping it around underneath. And then they're not very even. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this part and go back under. And there we go, that looks better. And then what you can do is you can keep your spirals round. If you want, you can pinch the tops a little bit to get more of a kind of a sharper effect, but that is up to you. And then you just arrange them how you want to. And then if you want shorter antenna, you can just either curl them up with your fingers like we did with the spiral. Um, That's what I'm gonna do with mine. Or you can just trim the top, it's up to you. And so, now you have a beautiful butterfly ring.
All right, I hope you really enjoyed making those crafts. And because we did crafts about caterpillars and butterflies, I just have a few books that I want to share on that topic. And the first one is called The Girl Who Drew Butterflies, How Maria Moran's Art Changed Science. And Maria Moran is a scientist who, and an artist who lived in Germany in the 1600s. And at that time, they actually thought caterpillars and butterflies were two separate things. They didn't know that a caterpillar would go into a cocoon or chrysalis and turn into a butterfly moth but they thought they were just two different species but through her work she liked to draw them ever since she was a kid she studied them she got specimens and she realized that these caterpillars became the butterflies and moths through going into the cocoon and chrysalis and she lived a really fascinating life she traveled around the world her daughters helped her in her work she was just a very amazing woman especially in the 1600s when it was women couldn't do quite as much as they can now in terms of jobs and so she just lived a very incredible life and i'm just gonna share with you a couple of the paintings that she did and this is when she traveled to indonesia and then the other piece of artwork that I want to show you is when she traveled to Africa. And so, yes, I would highly recommend it. It's an amazing biography about an amazing woman. And the next book I'm going to share with you is called Butterflies Are Pretty Gross. And this is written by Rosemary Mosco. And we actually just got this book in April and it's really fun. She is an artist as well, kind of the 21st century version of Maria. And she just got, we think butterflies are beautiful insects, which they are, but they do some pretty gross things too. And so she just draws and just shares a few facts about them. I'll just share one or two with you right now. Like sometimes we think that they're nice and quiet, but butterflies can be really noisy. And also sometimes the caterpillars can be really stinky. And also there's some really strange stuff about butterflies that she mentioned. And the, like one of the most interesting ones, like butterflies can drink tears from animals and they can eat poop, which I did not know about. So for, to learn more about the grossness of butterflies, I highly recommend this book. And the final book is the Eyewitness Butterfly and Moths by Paul Whaley. And this is just a really, really interesting look at butterflies and moths. It has a ton of information in it. It's one of those books that you can just pick and choose what you want to read. You can just look at the pictures or you can just like look at all the different facts that the book has. So very, a lot of great scientific information in this book. So thank you so much for joining me for the craft video this month. I look forward to sharing more crafts and books with you soon. Have a good day. Bye.